after every song because, well, it just takes too much time. And I tend to have lengthy introductions to songs, and I probably wouldn't get through all of them if you clapped after every one. So you can clap at the very end at 1 o'clock. I started singing ballads when I was seven because, fortunately, I had a brother 10 years older who brought home records from college. And a lot of them were folk music, Pete Seeger, Woody Guthrie, Ramblin' Jack Elliott, and oh, just wonderful folk singers. And so I learned them. What else is a seven-year-old going to do? And uh, my parents brought home not this dulcimer, but a little dulcimer. And I started playing little kids' tunes like Go Tell Aunt Brody and Skip to My Lou and all those little children's songs. But then when my brother brought these records home, I thought, oh, they tell stories. And I really like the long ones, especially you'll find out in my repertoire. I have a lot of songs where people die or get killed or get turned in the river. Anyway, I just was partial to those when I was growing up and still am. This one, though, this one appealed to me because I didn't know women could leave their husbands and run off with a gypsy. <laughs>
They just tell about it after the fact. And there's a lot of ballads like that. You, you, you don't really know until the last verse that the person actually did get killed.
for every chord. So it's, it's a pretty simple instrument to play. Um, I heard a girl sing it and play it, uh, well, Mabel and Carter, of course, in the Carter family. And my brother and I did do a lot of Carter family songs when we were in a band together. So I'm not doing a Carter family song, even though I could, but instead I'm going to play the auto harp but do a Woody Guthrie song. This is one of my favorite ballads, True Time, because uh, Woody Guthrie liked to, he was an outlaw himself. He wrote songs about Jesse James, lots of other outlaws, had a reputation. And uh, he had a guitar that said, this machine kills hate. And so people called him a communist, but you know, it just, okay, let's, is there something about fascism? This machine, what is it? Kills fascism, that's it. Fascism or fascists? Fascists, that's right, thank you. Now we got it straight. This machine kills fascists. Anyway, this is a song about an outlaw named Pretty Boy Boy. If you know the story, uh, especially listen to the last verse. It's got a clever last verse. Come and gather round me, children. Story I will tell about a pretty boy, Floyd, and I. Songs are 
He took tunes that people already knew and recycled them. Basically, he was a great recycler of tunes and just wrote new words. This is to this tune of Red Wing, if you know that tune. And it's easy to catch the chorus so you can sing along and get it.
Only I was out where you are, and the woman singing was Colleen Anderson. And it was such a great song that I asked her after the concert if I could learn it and play it and sing it. And she, she just she just ripped the song out of her notebook and handed it to me. She likes to have other people play, play her songs. But she's a great songwriter. And I have to give you just a little information of why she wrote this song. If you don't mind, I'm going to read it. There's this chemical called MCHN. Yeah? I used to know it stood for methyl, chloro, help me, Jim, whatever. <laughs> and it ends with methyl. But anyway, it was a chemical that leaked out of tanks along the Elk River in January 2014, I'm sure most of you remember. So um, it affected over 300,000 residents in the Charleston area because uh, the American Water Company had their water taken intake for all their, their uh, patrons, all the people who use their water, just a few yards away. So all that contamination got in hotels, restaurants, schools, all had to close for at least two weeks. They had to clean out the pipes, the water pipes. It was a mess. So the legislators down in Charleston, they, uh, they thought it made people feel better. It, it gave people a chance to come to the House of Delegates and tell how they were inconvenienced. Because, you know, it makes people feel better if somebody listens to their complaints, you know. So, they each got three minutes to tell what a bad time it was for them. They had to buy their water. National Guard came and down with tanks of water and everything. But, so everybody got their three minutes. And Colleen, I said, that's when she, she said, well, I wrote a song. Do you mind if I just sing it? And they said, no, go ahead.
Cy Khan, great songwriter. That my brother and I did a lot of his songs. And um, he had a notebook full of songs he'd never recorded. And Sarah Lynch Thompson and Sam Gleaves put out an album about, I guess about five years ago, something like that. Michael and Carrie Klein gave me a copy of it. And right away, I learned three songs off of it. They're great songs. But he just said, well, they just didn't all fit a theme or something. But this whole album um, that Sarah Lynch Thompson and Sam Gleaves did, it was Sam Gleaves, his um, Psychons. This was one of my favorites lately, a ballad called Red Haired Becky.
uh, originally I wanted to do this uh, gig in February because that's maple syrup time. But Katie, who planned had already booked that one, and Les Kid had already booked March. But you know, just a month past maple syrup time, so I thought, I'm going to do this one anyway. And my daughter knows it. Alright, if this is too loud, let me turn it down, because I sing this with gusto, and it's a calypso beat. <laughs>
Jane Birdsong.